Uh, the next speaker is a lady from Italy, and she's going to talk about does networking help in achieving a higher level of accessibility and profitability in the tourism industry? And I'd like to welcome Anna Grazia Laura, President of the European Network for Accessible Tourism, to the stage, please. <laughs> okay, good morning everybody and many, many thanks for the invitation to come here to Dubai, this fantastic city that I haven't been seeing for more than 25 years. Um, I am representing here uh, an association called INAT. INA stands for European Network of Accessible Tourism. And we were born about 11 years ago or with the funding of the European Commission. This is why, uh, this is where INA in European comes from. But as a matter of fact, now we have members in many countries of the world, not only Europe, and among our members, we have private association, we have tourist bodies, we have public bodies. And what we do, we uh, offer consultancy, we try to networking in order to make tourism and accessible tourism and tourism for all uh, spread all over the world, in Europe and all over the world. These are some of our members, uh, of our contacts. Some of them are full members of INAT and they participate in the decision of the association. And some, like the European Commission, are observers of what we do and what we develop. As you can uh, notice from the slide, we have many national tourist organization with whom we cooperate a lot. And we will see during the presentation how we uh, involve ourselves and the tourist organization in developing common strategies for the development of accessible tourism. But what it is accessible tourism is a universal design tourism for all. It's like making all destinations, locations, offers, anything that can be used by the widest range of persons by the widest range of people having different needs and having different requirements. How? In accessibility, inclusion, comfort, and sustainability. Sustainability is particularly important and uh, the world is moving towards sustainable goals and this is how tourism can also contribute to the development of these goals. Of course, uh, accessible tourism is not a niche market, is not a tourism all in, by itself, but is part of the full offer of the tourist sector. You may go for any type of vacation, tourist vacation, you go to enjoy uh, gastronomy in a country, you go to find your own cultural uh, sources or to discover alter, other cultures all over the world. Anything that uh, a normal tourist can do is uh, done by everybody, including people of uh, how determination. I've learned these words in here, and I find that it is uh, a nice system to describe people with uh, accessibility, with access needs. As a matter of fact, we should be aware that uh, disabilities do not reserve, that are not reserved to mobility impairments, to visual impairments or hearing impairments, <coughs> sorry, or learning disabilities. These are the normal categories that we uh, refer to, but we have a lot more uh, uh, let's see, um, people and a lot more of uh, activities that can be done considering the fact that there might be different uh, 
uh, abilities uh, that might be uh, different requirements, and uh, uh, we have to be able to cope with all of them. We should also consider, and it's very important to be uh, attentive to this fact, that 70% of these abilities are not visible. So we shouldn't be uh, too quick to judge a person. We should be aware that every one of us may have those so-called hidden disabilities that need to be considered, that need to be taken into consideration when we plan and design a product for everybody. Our political reference for all of us is the policy framework dictated by the, Euro, the uh, United Nations Convention of People with Disabilities, which has been approved by all countries and ratified by a lot of countries in the world, which uh, set the rules to, so that people with disability can have a full participation in social life and in tourism. Tourism is particularly covered by Article 30, which dictates the rules to be uh, uh, able to offer a friendly uh, environment to anybody and take into consideration the right to be included. Uh, from, the other, from another point of view, the United Nations World Tourism Organization dictated and adopted uh, in, uh, uh, at the end of last century a tourist for all uh, code of ethics so that all the member states have a certain set of rules that should be followed when acting in the tourist field. Uh, the United uh, Nations WTO is one of the organizations that we have a memorandum of understanding with, and together with them, we were able to set up uh, handbooks that are very useful for the tourist industry, and they are distributed to all the members of the United Nations World Tourist Organization. The first one uh, are the recommendations on accessible tourists, where they uh, set a number of suggestions to the Tunis world in order to make the supply, in order to make the offer more accessible and more usable by people with any specific access needs. And the second one, which is more recent, has been taking into consideration a very important fact. People with uh, disabilities need to know in advance what they will find at their destination. And they have to get information, actual, reliable, updated, and certified information in order not to risk the, to uh, get to a place and see that what the expectations were are not met. In this case, the holiday could be this, uh, a nightmare and could probably not find an alternative solution for some particular customers. We have been already listening to this figure. In the world, there are one billion people with disabilities, which is one out of seven people, and this figure should uh, give us the strength to struggle and proceed in creating an inclusive society and in creating an inclusive tourist offer because we have a big, big potential that could and would like to come and visit, to go and visit, to participate in the cultural and tourist adventure in any opportunity offered by the world. The figures uh, show, as we said, that the tourists are rising, the tourism receipts are growing, and there is an increasing demand for inclusive experiences. These are some figures that relate to Europe, and we have seen that there is a lot of potential for business uh, receipts, but unfortunately, only 9% 
of the European tourist providers say that they can offer some kind of product for people with disabilities. 9% is really nothing, and by 2020, another 1,200,000 well, 1, facilities should be accessible. If not, this will mean a loss for the tourism industry of about 142 billion each year. And what, he, what is also worse is that the plus 3.4 million jobs would be uh, realized only if this loss doesn't exist. Otherwise, we will have a loss in jobs related to the tourism industry. So let's look quickly at the situation because I see my time going very quickly. We should see what is the, quest, the problem, what are the problems for visitors, businesses, destination, and policy makers. For visitors, is a problem. They don't know if they can travel. They don't know how safely they can travel. They uh, don't know the quality of infrastructure they will find and the access standards, which vary a lot from a country to another one. For the tourism industry, uh, accessible tourism is seen more like a problem than an opportunity. They feel that the uh, tourism market is not for uh, the accessible tourism market is not for them. They feel that the cost of um, welcoming tourists with disabilities is too high, so they avoid the market. And destinations are more or less on the same size, unless there is. And I heard this morning the first speaker talking about a strong relationship between public and private sector. This is an absolute need in order to make a destination flourish and being able to cancel or reduce all the problems that people with disability face when traveling. What are the needs? The four essentials are based on destination uh, information. This is basic. Based on transport. Transport is the tool that unites all the possibilities to go around. Infrastructure, of course, not only accommodation, but sites, things to see, things to go, and service. Service is based on staff, on people, and people have to be trained to be able to perform a very good, uh, uh, let's say, uh, attitude towards their customers. So actions are needed at every, uh, at every level, from the bottom one up to the maximum of uh, linking together public uh, institution, private sector, and so that uh, a, and a plan, uh, a, a substantial plan could be made and performed. Let me give you very quickly a few examples of accessible tools initiatives. Uh, Barcelona, uh, visit Flanders in Belgium, and Turismo de Portugal in Portugal. Barcelona has made a lot of improvement in terms of information, and in the website of the uh, tourist office, you have immediately access to information for accessible tourism. Flanders has made a full uh, plan to uh, create accessible destinations with an action plan based on awareness raising of infrastructures and again reliable information. Accessible tourist program in Portugal has uh, invested 5 million euro for the period 2016-2017 which has been extended to 19 million to finance projects to improve the situation of accessibility of any facility in Portugal, and it has been a big success. Now I would like to uh, quickly mention a new competitive tool that we in at launched is the World Tunis for All Quality Program. It's a program that is proceeding step by step in order to make any facility 
get uh, a label that will show the world how accessible they are. Is now offered for uh, hotels and uh, um, accommodations, restaurants, shopping malls and shops. And in the future, we are preparing the tools for heritage sites, museum, and other, let's say, uh, facilities and attractions. How to apply, my slides will be here, so you will find the, uh, the website to send your application. And uh, uh, for the time being, it is only launched in Ireland, but we are uh, explaining and uh, um, widening it to Spain, Sweden, and Portugal. And this is what will happen to the certified facilities. They will have an open window on our uh, directory for accessible tunnels, the Pantu directory, so that they will be visible to all the world uh, and uh, every person, as in every customer will know exactly what is the situation of the uh, facility they are going to visit or they are going to book. Now, the question, the initial question of my presentation was, does networking help in achieving higher level of accessibility and profitability? And the answer is yes, it is essential. It is essential if we share the same vision on Tunis for all capacity to sustain inclusion, improve profitability and employment. Quality in the design of tourist products and quality in the provision of information and services. If we are ready to learn from each other, if we are willing to share experiences, if we build a common understanding and set concrete goals for the improvement of tourist destinations, towards accessible and inclusive tourism. And the workshop and the learning group we created with uh, international uh, with national tourism organization is working in this direction. And we already have three or four meetings where we learn from each other and we develop further our work. Dubai plans for the future are going in this direction. And we are here to offer our capacity to help and provide a strong contribution to Dubai goals. Thank you very much.